Hello, welcome to the second part of the video being my response to Vegan Gains video, which also had been a response to Human Hancock's conversation with Melanie Joy. Here is a thumbnail of the first part, please check it if you haven't seen it yet. And now let's continue. I will start from a short part of their video I want to comment on and then will express my opinion. Some activists argue that advocating for a reduction in consumption actually reinforces the belief that it's okay to eat animals, as long as you don't do it too much. Those who advocate for reduction argue that for many people, veganism is just too demanding and leads to people doing nothing rather than something. Now, Melanie believes that we can be strategic and stick to our values by telling people to be as vegan as possible. She emphasizes how what's physically possible isn't always psychologically possible. Now, telling people to be as vegan as possible is a reducitarian ask, but it frames veganism as the end goal. I don't see how this is inconsistent. It's just the strategy that Melanie believes will help animals most effectively. I had somebody once say to me, um, Melanie, you should be a fruitarian. And they like made a pretty strong case for why I should be fruitarian. And I was like, well, you know, I, you know, I, I, what about the winter? I was living in Boston at the time. It's cold in the winter. Like, oh no, 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 don't worry. Like, you're fine. You can, you can eat this, this, and this. You can warm your food up. Just don't cook it. Um, it, it was these fruits I was talking about. Well, you know, I travel a lot. Oh, if you plan in advance, you can be fine travels. Well, I, I like going out to dinner. Oh, there are plenty of places are accommodating. I totally sounded like a non-vegan, right? And I'm all defensive. I'm all like coming up with, and then I just said, I just can't do it. It's not possible. They said, Melanie. It is possible. You live across the street from Whole Foods. It's possible. And I that was really interesting for me because this is exactly the way that we approach non-vegans. It's Yeah, so this is just beyond idiotic. Uh, so this is a false analogy. She's comparing something that would be just simply a personal preference mm -hmm. versus something that's a moral obligation. Uh, so she's saying, oh, well, going like raw vegan fruitarian, making that sort of choice is the same as choosing not to support a Holocaust, yeah. uh, as if they they both share like the same moral weight or responsibility. Um, you can choose to be a raw vegan fruitarian. I think it's the stupidest idea imaginable. It's just not an adequate diet for most people. Mm. But um, you can do that. You also can be vegan. Uh, the issue, like just a normal vegan, uh, you can give up meat and dairy and eggs and, and everything. Um, the difference here is there's no moral obligation for you to go raw vegan fruitarian, but there is an obligation for you to go vegan. So I don't know why you'd like, again, this is just carnist cuckoldry where she's saying, oh, well, because, you know, I don't want to go raw vegan fruitarian. You know, people shouldn't be uh, going vegan if, if they don't feel like it, as if it's just a personal preference and there's no moral obligation to do it. Uh, it, it baffles me that this person even calls herself vegan while saying this. As far as I'm aware, Melanie was making that point to illustrate how easily we can become defensive to the idea of behavior change and how our perceptions of what we think is possible for ourselves can determine how we respond to asks for behavior change. And if the argument for fruitarianism wasn't an ethical one, wouldn't that make Melanie's point even stronger? That would suggest that she became defensive and started rolling off these justifications, even though the person she was talking to wasn't suggesting that she was behaving unethically, which really shows how easily we can become defensive and how resistant we can be to change. What do I think about that analogy? I think it illustrates that depending on some of this personal hierarchy of values and priorities, we can invest various amount of effort to achieve our goals. And what may sound easy for a person for whom some idea is a priority, it sounds very difficult or unrealistic or even impossible for a person for whom it is not a priority. So in this way, in this meaning, just as a simple thought experiment, this analogy was okay. Because for us, saving animals is on the top of uh, our uh, hierarchy, is our priority. Therefore, we accept a certain degree of sacrifice. And I strongly disagree with people uh, who claim, oh, it is so easy to be vegan. I think this is very wrong because it is easy only if this is your priority. 
For example, in case of my city where I live, I cannot get several different products in one shop. So I must spend a lot of time for shopping because I can get one product in this shop then for example to for example i can buy vegan bread spread in one shop uh, which is not even the nearby shop so i must go far to get a bread spread then i separately like another day or i i need some extra hour to go to another shop to buy something for my dinner I can get vegan uh, yogurt in completely different shops. So it, it is so complicated. It's so frustrating that I cannot go just to one shop. To I cannot go to a nearby shop and buy everything I need. I really need to plan. Uh, I need, really need to spend so much time to go to various distance shops to get what I need. Is it possible? Of course, it is possible. Is it easy? No way, it is not. It's complicated, it's frustrating, it's time-consuming. And of course, uh, vegan products are at least three or four folds more expensive. So it is possible only when I give some very high priority. But not for all the people, uh, going vegan is priority. So... Um, she compared this to that fruitarian situation because yes, for some people, uh, not touching uh, anything that is cooked is priority in their heads. For example, um, yes, I, I hear such opinions uh, in my country from people promoting vegetarianism or um, raw diets or fruitarianism that um, for them, cooker or an oven seem to be devil himself they are truly fighting with them and uh, uh, i heard such opinion that a human being shouldn't even uh, stand nearby the oven it's such an evil so yes for them this is priority never to even touch such a product so because they give more priority they also tend to accept higher level of sacrifice to get to get this to achieve this level of purity or however they perceive it i think instead of um, claiming that veganism is easy we should rather focus on why it is not easy and how to make it more easy more available affordable for ordinary people who don't care that much for whom animals are not priority a vegan guys believes in power of making people feel guilty and yeah he believes in magical power of a sense of guilt but first of all my question is do you think it's a universal feeling that everybody experiences because I think no. I think such feelings like a sense of guilt, same as shame, are strongly related to low self-esteem. And uh, especially when he tries to appeal to successful people, uh, popular people, he, when he is criticizing them. And uh, if he thinks that he is able or play on somebody's sense of guilt, I think he might be wrong because only some people know this feeling and those are basically people with very low self-esteem. There are some people who always feel guilty. No matter what, they feel guilty. You have headache, somebody feels guilty because a sense of guilt is not a rational feeling. It's not that correlated with facts. It comes from your subjective low self-esteem many people don't experience this don't know it and um, are even strongly against such feelings and whenever they see a trace of such feelings they will easily reduce it i believe healthy people mentally healthy people strong people don't have um, such feelings in my case i can consider something as a mistake 
Of course, I can regret and think mm, this was wrong, but I never, never give too much attention to the past because I cannot influence past anymore. It already happened. So not it's not only about sense of guilt. It's also about past tragedies or accidents. For example, once I was stolen my whole salary, which I earned with a very hard job abroad. I was working so hard and my whole one month salary was stolen. But you think I <laughs> I was thinking a lot about this. I like, oh my God, I was crying. No, it took for me no more than one day or several hours because it was stolen. It happened. It, it was done. So yes, there is nothing to think about. I just must focus on further work and do my job. So I normally I forget things instantly. So also if I did something wrong, then I think, okay, this was wrong. So now I will try to do things better. And I don't um, cultivate in myself a sense of guilt. I don't have it. I just, yes, regret. And so I try next time do things differently, but I don't have sense of guilt. I don't think anybody would be able to play on me with a sense of guilt. No, that's, and I, I'm sure there are many, many people like me. And uh, actually, I'm sure all uh, healthy people are in this way. It doesn't exist. But uh, does it mean that that I completely don't believe in sense uh, of uh, blaming people. I deeply believe in sense of um, aggressive style of uh, animal advocacy, but not because a sense of guilt. No way. This is the last thing I would consider and I would think about it. I think as vegans, we have two very powerful uh, emotional tools to play. We can play people in two ways, I think, because there are two things which um, really work on people and which are very strong, very powerful. One is to show people the beauty of love. Love is always very attractive, captivating, is a drag for people. So we have those two options. We can show people how to love animals in a beautiful way is very, very super attractive. Otherwise, we have another very powerful tool. It's rage. People love rebellion. People, people easily resonate with those who are angry, with anger, with rage. This is very, very super attractive. Uh, therefore, people love rock music or metal music. Doesn't matter what it is about. Doesn't matter what the lyrics are about. When we hear uh, rage in somebody's voice, anger, we tend to resonate automatically. So I don't think that sense of guilt is our tool. We don't have such a tool. But expressing our rage is, is super powerful, super attractive. We can pull a lot of people. Many people identify with those emotions. We only need to show them content because rage is something which they already feel. And we should only show what it is about. Oh, it is about animals. Okay, then it is about animals. This is something that we can easily play. Those are emotions that we can easily play and use because they truly uh, exist and they are very attractive and captivating. And this way I gave the answer to what I think about a vegan gains advocacy. Because if I would consider something really, really positive about him, this is his aggressive style. And not because of sense of guilt, which he thinks he can impose on people. I think he cannot. He doesn't have such power. Normal people, healthy people don't have such emotions. But being angry... Rage itself is uh, attractive and can pull many people. 
and many people resonate with such emotions. Yet I don't like when he uses his rage against other vegans, like in these situations. This discussion among vegan gains and humane Hancock was lacking respect on vegan gains side and was so much different on humane Hancock's side. I also think uh, vegan gains has such a tendency to tell uh, other vegans too much uh, about what they should do, how they should act, what their strategies should be, what they should think. And uh, I think this is very, very wrong uh, because as long as um, someone is inside the spectrum of being vegan, He's more or less vegan, but he is he still uh, acts morally. We cannot objectively say that uh, there is something really wrong in his thinking or uh, in the way he acts. We should accept that all of us, we, we are different, we think differently, we act differently, we uh, give different priorities to different strategies and this is all okay this should be this way and um, one of the reasons why I find it very very wrong is that making decisions your own decisions judging the situation judging perceiving the reality analyzing it and making your own decision is definition of life this is life by definition making your decision this is the way we define consciousness consciousness is something what makes decisions what makes choices makes a choice so depriving somebody of the right to make his own decisions maybe sometimes even not optimal maybe sometimes wrong, but this is equal to depriving somebody his life. So as long as some of these decisions are in the spectrum of being moral, we have no right to criticize such a person or such choices. Of course, we can maybe disagree, we can express our opinions, why not? We should discuss, but always respectfully we must respect their own right to their life which means making own, own decisions thank you very much for today and see you soon again bye bye